Hello, everybody. My name's Mark Johnson. I work for IND on a project to digitalize core topic teaching across the university. Now, I want to introduce you in a very short video to a tool called Kaggle, which you can think about as a kind of 21st century data encyclopedia. And just to sort of put you in the mood, I've put a picture of the first encyclopedia, which was published in the 18th century by Diderot, and had a tremendous impact because it contained information on how to do all sorts of things which people just hadn't had access to before. Kaggle is a bit like this, but what it contains is huge amounts of data and a vast community of students and machine learning experts who are learning how to improve and gain extra skill in processing data and doing machine learning. So I'm just going to show you the tool. So the tool is here. You can sign in for it, and um, but you don't have to sign in. You can just browse the site. The site is at kaggle.com, just at the top there. And a bit of history about this. Kaggle started as a website to enable people to take part in competitions to find the best machine learning solutions to data processing. And that's still what it does. So actually what happens on here is that you can see the second link here, compete. Um, people engage in competitions to find the best solutions to data problems or data analytic problems uh, by writing code. And they talk to each other about it. And because Kaggle has been running competitions on all kinds of data topics for a long time, it has amassed a huge amount of data on virtually every topic you could possibly think of. And this is how it's turned into a kind of encyclopedia. So perhaps the most interesting part of Kaggle that you can first of all look at is, is the data that it contains. So if I click on data here, and I can see the data sets. Now, just even by scrolling down the page, I'll do a search in a minute. By scrolling down the page, we can see heart attack analysis and prediction data set, the World Happiness Report, the Clubhouse data set. I'm not sure what that is. Top games on Google Play. It's completely um, eclectic in terms of the, the, the subjects that are covered. And I can search the, the data sets for uh, anything specific. So if I want to look for um, uh, chemistry, for example, uh, that's a very broad field, but obviously we've got various things. So chemistry models, periodic table data, um, database of mineral properties, um, chem informatics. Let's let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at one of these. And I'll just clicking clicking into any of these topics gives me a bit of information about what the data is. So this has all been uploaded by people who are part of the Kaggle community. So anybody who signs up for an account and um, so the data set contains data from the NCI database and MoleculeNet. Molecule descriptors are calculated from these data sets using the Mordred module. Um, I'm not sure what that means, but I'm sure there are plenty of people who do. So here we have various uh, files which contain data. And um, I can, if I'm interested in this data, I can write some code to explore it. And I'll show you that the, the actual coding environment is integrated into Kaggle itself, which is a very interesting thing. So, but other people have also written code. So you can see that um, other people have written stuff in here, exploring various things that you can do with this data set. And here we can actually see some of the code that they've written. And the beauty of this is that we can actually run some of this code or even write our own code. So I can say copy and edit and it will load up a programming environment. So this is all, this is a programming environment now where I can interact with this data and use this person's code to perform the same things and I can change their code. So if I want to learn how this person has done this particular task, I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing, but if I want to learn what, they, what they've done, then I can start to run. So I just click on the play button for this code here, and I can run this code and start to run 
the tasks that they've they've established and then work out how they've done it and this is how, this is how people everybody learns programming really by trying to work out what other people's code has done and um yeah, I can see uh, from looking at this, uh, because I have some experience of this, that they're doing quite a lot of machine learning with this code. So, so that's very interesting. And so I can I can move through this and and here we are, it's given a given a result. So these are these are actually all the files that are in in this particular data set. So that's very interesting. Um let's have a look at another one and see what we have there. So um I'm going to have a look for something completely different, like happiness. Let's see what it's got on happiness. So we've got various um, data sets on happiness, and I can see the World Happiness Report. So I'm going to click on this, and there's a, a description of what the data is. So I can see what is dystopia. Ah, that looks very interesting. Okay, and um, but what I'm going to do, I can I can see a description of all the data in the data set, and um, but I'm going to create my own programming environment on this data set. So I just just click on new notebook, and it loads up a new programming environment and gives me the, some introductory code which just lists the files. So if I press play on that, it will just list the files that are in this data set. And once it's done that, I'm going to write some code to actually look at the data and maybe filter it a bit. So nothing, nothing particularly clever. Um, so I'm going to start a new code block. This programming environment is um, basically, I'm using the language uh, Python and the programming environment is called a Jupyter Notebook. And Jupyter Notebooks are integrated programming environments which run in a web browser. And they're all over the internet now. We, there are Jupyter Notebooks available in all sorts of ways. You can do it through Google. You can do it through uh, a, a very interesting thing called CoCalc and um, various platforms a bit like Kaggle uh, will allow you to create Jupyter Notebooks within their environment and write code and run it. It's very, very powerful. So I'm going to just load up this data. Um, I know a bit of Python, so uh, I know what I need to type. And there's a command called read, and then the type of the file. So this is a CSV file, so I want to say read CSV. And in brackets and quotes, I just need to put the um, full path of one of these files, and we can have a look at the data. So I'm just going to print out, print out that particular data file, and we'll have a quick look at it. So if I run this, so I just click on play, and I can see, okay, so I've got um, countries, uh, regions, happiness rank, happiness score. Look, Denmark is number one. That's, I'm sure, sure you knew that, but, um, this is this is very interesting and generosity. That's that's a very interesting category. So what if I try and look at um, the uh, country? Two brackets in here, country, and I want to have a look at generosity and run that. So that should just return me um, two fields from this data. Here we are. So here we have the generosity and the countries. And um, I'm going to ask it to sort this. So there's a command called sort values. And the generosity is what I want it to sort by. And I think we should go from the highest generosity to the lowest. So that means I want it to be descending, which uh, in this particular way of doing it, I have to say, don't do it in an, an ascending way. Ascending equals false. And that will show me which are the most generous countries. Now, what does that show? Well, that's quite interesting. Look, Myanmar has the highest generosity index, followed by Thailand, Indonesia, Malta, um, and Greece has the lowest. Uh, well, I I don't know what that means, but I, th I think that's very interesting. Okay, so it's quite possible taking uh, this data to 
do much more sophisticated kinds of analysis and even to train a machine learning algorithm to make predictions on a particular subset of data. So, you know, perhaps you've got a, um, a subset of data which um, indicates uh, certain some of these variables and then the machine learning can determine what the likelihood of happiness in those contexts might be. So I hope you find that interesting. I really recommend exploring Kaggle and just seeing the vast um, amount of data that's available in it.